Okay, this tutorial is a little bit weird. It's at the request of my, let's see, how old is he, six-year-old son. And he wants to make, wants me to make him a Pokeball in 3D. So I thought that'd be fun to do for him, but also a good opportunity to show some techniques. I might actually bust out some Boolean operations here, which are not my favorite. But for the Pokeball, it might actually be the easiest thing to do. Pokeball looks like this. Get it to come up here. Uh, one of these guys. So basically I want to model something just like this. So I'll be able to show you some good modeling techniques, some good and some good uh, V-Ray materials as well. So that's the Pokeball we're going to make. It's essentially going to be this. We want to put red and white on it. Let's okay, so I started with a sphere to do that. Create a sphere. I drew it like this and all I really did was rotate it and turn up the uh, segments on it to 60. So here we are. Now I'm actually going to convert that to actually let's make a copy of it. Control V copy. We want one that's a little smaller too. Make sure you're doing a uniform scale on it, uh, which I am not. Make sure this is yet to uniform scale, so it's scaling in all directions like that. Make it a little smaller. I'm going to take this one and convert it to an edit poly. Convert to edit poly. And I'm just going to take these polygons here and delete them like that. Now what we can do is put a shell modifier on that. And let's shell it in the other way. Oops, we want to go up like that until it hits the other sphere. Should be good. Already we've got something that resembles a Pokeball. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Uh, we might actually want to do the boolean first. Let's see. So for that, the only hard part of this is that uh, circle where the button goes. So let's do something like this. Put it in wireframe so we can see. Get our button about the right size like that. And let's make sure it's aligned properly by aligning it with this outer sphere. We'll take the pivot point, take the X position, the Y position, and the Z position, and center it on that sphere. Is that right? Yeah. Apply. Okay, now it's perfectly centered. Yeah, so it should be right in the center of that sphere, just like that. Sorry, let me turn off these lights and cameras. Let's extrude it until it goes all the way through the ball like that. And let's make a copy of that. Control V, copy. And let's just hide the copy. Okay, now let's take, we want to subtract. Let's, let's ignore that shell for now. Let's just delete it. So to do a Boolean operation, you go into create mode, go into standard primitives, and then you do the drop down here and do compound objects. And we can do a Boolean. And booleans are very finicky in 3D Studio Max, so this may or may not work. Let's see. So we've got the sphere, uh, the original sphere selected. We want to subtract this cylinder from it. So all you have to do is say subtraction A minus B. B is the second thing we're going to select. Now hit pick operand B and hit that thing. And wow, look at that. That is perfect. The back side as well. Perfect Pokeball. Now um, let's just convert it back to Edit Poly again. That's fine. And then let's shell it. Put that shell right back on. That's fantastic. Now let's unhide that other one. And with this one, we actually want to make it a little smaller so it's the size of our button. Kind of like, right 
uh, let's see. Look at that thing. Pokeball. Ooh, that one. Hmm. Yeah, these these all look a little different. That band. See on this one, the band and the space around the button is kind of equal. But there, the band is huge and the space around the button is small. I like that a little better. But maybe we'll make it a little bigger. Something like that. Eyeballing it just a bit. And actually, we can just take this center sphere and do another Boolean operation. Create com uh, compound objects, Boolean. This time we want to add, or union, I guess it's called. Union, and then pick Opera and B. Now those have uh, unions together. They're all the same piece now. Now let's convert that to edit poly, and we'll do a little bit of poly modeling on this, and then we'll be done. I'm just going to push this face in like that. So it's about the depth, the right depth of our button. And then on the button, if you look on the Pokeball, it is inset like this. And let's add, so let's just to add a little more detail, I'm going to extrude it in and then inset it slightly and then extrude it back out like that. Now if you hit, actually let's do, let's do it a little more like that. Now if you hit, hold down control and hit edges, then it will select all the edges that were touching the face you had selected. And then let's chamfer, this is basic poly modeling tools. Let's chamfer it like four times, make it nice and round. If you right click on this arrow here, it'll take it back to zero for you, and then you can start from there and get a nice smooth finish there. Let's do the same thing here by selecting a loop, or sorry, selecting an edge and then looping it all the way around like that. And then apply that same chamfer just like that. That gives us nice rounded edges, they render nicer. Everything looks better with rounded edges because most things in reality have slightly rounded edges. Let's convert this whole thing to an edit poly. Let me just see if we can get a nice loop here. Oh, sort of. It goes to the boolean and then stops. Okay, well, I'm not going to chamfer that whole edge because that might be a bit messy. So we'll leave that as a hard edge. Um, let's see, one other thing we can do here is let's grow this selection and let's make this all in one smoothing group. And then select that and make it, and let's clear that smoothing group so that one stays flat. Let's take these, select all those edges. That's good. And then do a ring. You'll see what that does. And then hold down control and select fa polygon mode again. Well, that didn't work. It should have. Absolutely should have worked. Anyway, it's all these guys I want. We're going to smooth those, put those all in the same smoothing group so that it's all not faceted as it goes around. It's going to be nice and smooth. Let me do that real Okay, I let's see. I, I just selected all those and smoothed them, but it caused smoothing problems here, which I don't want. Hmm. Smoothing, I could uh, let's see. Edit, select, invert. Let's get everything but the ones in here. So let's go to that. Hold down Alt, undo all these. smooth everything else together so all those are going to be smooth together that's good so clear all the ones that are there and let's put it on all on smoothing group 32 and now those are all smooth together that's fine and you'll see that now come on gotta be out of polygon mode 
Okay, now everything's smooth and real nice. That actually looks pretty darn good. Now you'll you'll remember that I didn't do it correctly on the back, but that gives me a good opportunity to show you the symmetry modifier, which will do that for us basically. Flip it in the Y. You can symmetry it in the X or the Y or the Z. In this case, we want the Y, and that you can see that took this side and symmetried it, mirrored it right to the other side. So now we've got a complete Pokeball. At this point, I will just probably collapse that into an edit poly. And really, we're about done here. Let's select this top. And because they're going to be different materials, um, well, let's just do it like this. Let's set that ID to 3 and set this ID to 4 we'll say and then um, we'll just make a multi sub object material that has those two IDs in it and we'll be good to go okay there's the model by the way I have no idea about any of this Pokemon stuff you'd have to ask my son I literally have no idea what this thing is but um, but to make the model of it it's pretty easy and I'm gonna put some cool materials on it now I'm also going to make this uh, available for download if you're into this sort of thing. Like I said, I have no idea what it is, but apparently people like it. So let's go into standard material. Sorry, really, we're just clicking on standard material. We're going to turn this into a multi-sub-object material. Okay, I opened up the material browser and I selected under standard multi-sub-object and that gives you a default of 10 different objects that you can put all into the same material. I actually just need 4 because that's the highest I went. So we set that bottom thing to 4 which would be this white V-Ray paint material. If you don't know how to use V-Ray paint material uh, check out, sub just subscribe to my channel and I've got a whole tutorial on V-Ray paint ma material, car paint material I guess it's called and that's actually what I started with for this file is is my tutorial file from that so you can just go watch that you can see everything you need to know about how I made these materials here but for now I'm just gonna pop them in We want the red in 3 and the white in 4 these are gonna give it a cool look and then just assign those materials to it um, I need a just a solid black material so I'm using V-Ray here obviously I gotta open this up and get a V-Ray material V-Ray and this is a good opportunity to teach you a little bit about materials we want the diffuse to be black because that's what the Pokeball is and then we can just put the reflection really high because it's like you know I'm gonna make it like a shiny plastic or whatever it is we can leave Fresnel reflections on that's fine I like to preview them like that. So there, that's the super shiny black. That's good. The hard one's going to be stainless steel, which super common material. Um, a lot of people do it poorly. I like to make my diffuse color on the stainless, or the, I guess it's like brushed aluminum or something that I want to make this button. Uh, something like that. Uh, a darker diffuse than you would think and then just get a lot of that color, a lot of the lightness from the reflection. You can see this if you subscribe to my channel too. You'll see a lot of videos about V-Ray tutorial or V-Ray materials and just to, uh, materials in general. That glossiness, uh, that's going to be pretty low, like maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.5 and actually we need Fresnel reflections off because we want this stuff to really just um, reflect a lot from all angles. Let's turn up the subdivisions on this because it's going to be real noisy when you have these these uh, very uh, non-glossy reflections, I guess. Um, okay, and the other thing is an anisotropy, which I will... Let's see. Let's set this to about 0.5. And let's actually preview this as a box like this. Okay, it's coming along. Looks pretty crappy right now. 
let's take this and set up a gradient ramp here for the rotation of that anisotropy. Gradient ramp is a standard. And let's, I think this is what we want to do. Let's go here and just preview this map. If we do radial, no, spiral. Spiral, yes. That's cool. Okay, so that's going to change that rotation of that anisotropy as it goes around that gradient, which might be kind of cool. Like that. There we go. So that gives you that cool brushed aluminum button looking thing, which is awesome. Let's select that face and grow it all the way out to the edges of the button. And then we will put that brushed aluminum on. Then, let's see, we, we need that to be mapped as well. Let's make sure that this gradient map is showing up. Okay, and you can see that's not mapped well. So, so we can just map this button here by putting a UVW map modifier on. I, I have a button for it, but yours might be here. UVW map. Let's make sure that we're getting that just like that right there. So it's fit and tiling one time on that button. And then what you'll do is collapse to edit poly. So it'll burn it, burn that UVW map just into that that one button. And then go back into polygon mode. These should still be selected. And then do edit, select invert like that. And then place the black material on that part. And if it's it's collapsed down to an edit poly. You can do that where you can just apply materials to select faces. That should be the Pokeball. Let's render it and see how it looks. All right, there's the Pokeball. Pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, not the greatest modeling. Obviously, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Booleans. And if I was going to be meticulous about this, I would definitely go in and select that whole edge and uh, chamfer that as well because that hard edge just doesn't look that great and I could have added some more segments to the sphere so that you didn't get any segmenting in here but overall it's cool you can see what the chamfer does look like on this button the button looks awesome I think that stainless or that brushed aluminum looks great anyway there it is that model is going to be available on my website I'll put the link in the description and now I'm just going to take these uh, render channels which are the alpha, nothing, the reflection, specular, Z depth, and the RGB. I'm going to take those into Photoshop, do some quick post processing, and then I'll be done. So grab the Pokeball if you're into this sort of thing. And also, if you want to know more about some of my materials and all that kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can see kind of how, how more in depth how to make these things. And also, I'm not going to show the post processing here, post processing here, but if you want to see how to post process something like this with those render channels, then watch my subscribe to my channel and watch my video on V-Ray paint, V-Ray car paint material because I I show it all in that video. Okay, see you in Photoshop. All right, I'm just finishing up the uh, Photoshopping here, just quick post processing stuff. Anyway, there, there was the render, and here's my, my final. So, hope you liked it. There it is. And uh, check out the download if you want it. And subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos. Thanks a lot.